So now we are going to be seeing tutorials on uh, essential nutrition action, ENA. These are the uh, actions which can be taken uh, when mother is pregnant and also when uh, baby is under two years of age. And we will see that what are these actions, you know, what can be done which will improve children's height uh, as well as children's IQ, you know, because uh, when mothers come to us, when children are already you know more than three years four years of age and you know and even older children mothers sometimes complain that you know they don't remember they don't and they can't concentrate they you know they have difficulty with the math so then it's too late you know so here uh, in this two tutorials which are coming up we have discussed that what are those uh, nutritional action that uh, uh, you know we can ask mothers to take and you'll definitely see much better growth in babies you know till two years of age thank you welcome to this spoken tutorial on essential nutrition actions for pregnant women in this tutorial we will learn about nutrient requirements during pregnancy nutrition actions required during pregnancy Essential nutrition actions are also known as ENA. ENA is an approach to improve the nutritional status of women and children. During pregnancy, a woman's body undergoes physical and hormonal changes. Her nutritional needs also increase. Nutrition in this period is important for the health of the mother and child. A baby in the mother's womb is dependent on its mother for nutrition. Time span from conception to the baby's second birthday is the first thousand days. This is the period of rapid growth and mental development. It also determines the present and future health of the baby and its mother. For the mother, a nutritious diet provides her relief from nausea and weakness. It helps in brain development of the fetus. It also helps in reducing risk of birth defects in babies and anemia in mothers. Let's discuss the nutrients and Nutrition actions required during pregnancy. There are many essential nutrients required during pregnancy. Protein is one of them. To meet the protein requirements, it is advised to eat protein rich food. Meat, fish, chicken, and eggs are excellent sources of protein. Pulses Beans, nuts, seeds, milk and milk products are other good sources. Essential fatty acids are also vital during pregnancy. These are also called as good fats. For example, DHA and EPA. Fish, nuts, and seeds are good sources of these fatty acids. Let's move on to other nutrients required during pregnancy. Folate is essential for DNA synthesis and fetal cell development. It also helps in reducing neural tube defects in infants. Including folate in daily diet during pregnancy is essential. Sprouts, green leafy vegetables, and chicken liver are good sources of folate. Along with folate, iron also plays an important role during pregnancy. Iron is required for the production of red blood cells. It helps in carrying oxygen to the entire body. During pregnancy, there is a rise in blood volume. 
Hence, women require a large amount of iron. This helps in meeting the requirements of the growing fetus. A reserve of iron is created in the fetus which can be used by them after birth. Deficiency of iron can result in anemia. To prevent anemia, the diet should include iron-rich foods. Chicken or goat's liver, brain, heart are good sources of iron. Seafood, eggs and garden cress seeds are other examples. Iron is also present in beans, green leafy vegetables and seeds. Turmeric powder and coriander seeds also have some amounts of iron. Anemia can also be caused due to parasite and worm infections. To prevent this, a pregnant woman should take deworming medicine. One dose of deworming medicine is recommended during the second trimester. Remember that tea and coffee should not be consumed along with meals. This will interfere with the iron absorption. Interestingly, vitamin C improves the absorption of iron in our body. To do so, eat iron-rich food and supplements with vitamin C-rich food. Gooseberry, tomatoes, guava are rich sources of vitamin C. Iron and folate requirements increase during pregnancy. Diet alone does not fulfill these requirements. Thus, iron folic acid supplement is recommended. However, a prenatal supplement does not replace a healthy diet. A prenatal supplement is taken before and during pregnancy. Pregnant women should ask for iron folic acid tablets from health workers. These tablets are provided by Anganwadi centers. These tablets are given after the first trimester for the next 100 days. It is also given post-delivery for the next 100 days. The tablet should be taken once a day. Pregnant women should take precautions while taking iron folic acid tablets. Tablet should be taken 2 hours after a meal to avoid nausea and discomfort. At times, she may pass black stools after consuming these tablets. Loose motion or constipation can also occur. However, these symptoms will settle after a few days. Also, iron folic acid tablets should not be taken along with calcium tablets. They should be taken as morning and evening doses. Calcium is another vital nutrient required during pregnancy. Calcium deficiency in pregnant women causes high blood pressure. It leads to swelling of the hand and feet. To avoid deficiency, she should include milk and milk products in her daily diet. Seeds, nuts, green leafy vegetables and dried fish also contain calcium. Calcium supplements are also recommended during and after pregnancy. Calcium tablets are provided by ICDS centers and Primary Healthcare Centers ICDS is an Integrated Child Development Service. These tablets are given from 14 weeks of pregnancy up to 6 months after delivery. The tablet has to be taken twice a day. Excess amount of calcium inhibits iron absorption. Hence, two calcium tablets should not be consumed together. One tablet should be consumed after breakfast or lunch. 
the other tablet can be consumed after an evening snack or dinner do not consume a calcium tablet on an empty stomach as it will cause gastritis gastritis is the inflammation of the stomach lining another nutrient that plays a vital role is iodine iodine is required for good health throughout all stages of life iodine cannot be stored well in the body hence small quantities of iodine is required daily fish prawns milk cheese and iodized salt are good sources of iodine to prevent iodine deficiency iodized salt should be used iodized salt is easily available in the local market while using iodized salt a few precautions should be taken it should be added at the end of the cooking iodized salt is sensitive to heat and light excess exposure to heat and light could destroy the iodine in the salt hence store it in a tightly sealed dark container other nutrients that play a vital role during pregnancy are choline and zinc vitamin b12 and magnesium are also important choline folate and vitamin b12 together reduce neural tube defects neural tube defects are birth defects that affect the brain and spinal cord choline is also essential for brain development whereas zinc helps in fetal development more information about these nutrients are explained in other tutorials please watch individual tutorials of these nutrients for example importance of protein importance of choline and folate also watch the importance of calcium and b12 a healthy diet is critical for both mother and child's health mother's diet must include different food groups the first food group is grains roots white tubers and plantains pulses are second group and nuts and seeds are third group fourth group is dairy meat chicken and fish are the fifth group the sixth group is eggs dark green leafy vegetables are the seventh group the eighth group is vitamin a rich vegetables rest of the vegetables and fruits are ninth and tenth groups she should include at least six food groups in her daily diet from these groups she should include protein rich food groups and good fats she should make sure to decrease consumption of starchy food along with nutrients water intake is also important it is recommended to include at least 8 glasses of water daily processed sugary salty food and caffeinated drinks should be avoided even alcohol and smoking should be strictly avoided remember all the nutrition actions mentioned in this tutorial they are important for a healthy pregnancy and healthy fetal development this brings us to the end of this tutorial welcome to the spoken tutorial on nutritious vegetarian recipes for pregnant women in this tutorial we will learn about importance of nutrient dense diet during pregnancy preparation of a few vegetarian recipes nutrient content of these recipes first let us understand 
the importance of nutrition during pregnancy during pregnancy a woman's body goes through physical and hormonal changes the body's nutritional needs increase what a woman eats is a source of nourishment for the growing fetus also thus the pregnant women should follow a healthy diet the diet should be rich in proteins good fats vitamins and minerals it will help in preventing any complications during pregnancy for example pregnancy diabetes hypertension anemia it may provide relief from nausea and constipation not consuming adequate nutrients can retard the development of the fetus the chances of premature delivery and low birth weight babies can increase hence a nutrient rich diet is recommended during pregnancy aside from eating well adequate water intake is necessary water helps in reducing the risk of urine infections it also reduces constipation hence ensure to drink 8 to 10 glasses of water every day alcohol drugs and smoking should be avoided during pregnancy these increase the risk of miscarriage and premature baby apart from intake of nutritious diet its absorption is also important food has anti nutrients like oxalates phytates and tannins their presence affects nutrient absorption by the body nutrient absorption can be enhanced by various cooking techniques for example soaking sprouting roasting and fermentation steaming sauteing and boiling are some other examples let us start with the preparation of our first recipe now to make sprouted cowpea cutlet the ingredients required are 1/4 cup sprouted cowpea 1/4 cup amaranth leaves 1 small chopped onion 1/4 cup roasted bengal gram flour and 1 teaspoon ginger garlic paste you will also need spices such as 1 teaspoon coriander powder 1/4 teaspoon turmeric powder and 1/4 teaspoon chili powder other ingredients required are 1/4 teaspoon curry leaves powder 1/4 teaspoon drumstick leaves powder and 1/4 teaspoon nuts and seeds powder preparation of these powders have been discussed in another tutorial please visit our website for more information you will also require 1 tablespoon oil or ghee and salt to taste before we begin i will tell you the procedure for sprouting the cowpea wash and soak the cowpea overnight or for 6 to 8 hours in water later drain the water and tie it in a clean muslin cloth keep it in a warm place for 6 to 8 hours and allow it to sprout in the same way you can sprout chickpeas soybeans moth beans etc let us proceed with the preparation of the cutlet now pressure cook the sprouted cowpea with 1 cup of water for two whistles once cooked keep aside to cool after it is cooled mash the cowpea except oil mix rest all ingredients with the mashed cowpea divide the mixture in small portions and shape it into small flattened cutlets now grease the pan with oil shallow fry the cutlets on both sides till light brown in color sprouted cowpea cutlets are ready this recipe consists of protein good fats calcium magnesium and potassium it is rich in other nutrients like iron zinc and folate as well 
If cowpea is unavailable, you can use other locally available beans. For example, chickpea, soybeans or moth beans. Instead of amaranth leaves, other green leafy vegetables can also be used. For example, spinach, fenugreek leaves, agathi leaves, drumstick leaves. Let us now proceed to the next recipe which is mixed pulses uttapam. For preparation of this recipe, we will need 1 tablespoon split red gram, 1 tablespoon of split green gram, 1 tablespoon of Bengal gram, 2 tablespoons of split black gram, 1 tablespoon of barnyard millet and 1 tablespoon of little millet. Other ingredients required are 1 tablespoon of chopped tomato, 1 tablespoon of chopped carrot, 1 tablespoon of chopped capsicum, 1 tablespoon of chopped onion, 1 teaspoon of ginger garlic paste and 1 teaspoon of fenugreek seeds. Spices which will be required are half teaspoon coriander powder, half teaspoon cumin powder and half teaspoon red chilli powder. Other ingredients required are 1 4 teaspoon nuts and seeds powder, 1 4 teaspoon drumstick leaves powder and 1 4 teaspoon curry leaves powder. Take 1 tablespoon of oil or ghee and salt to taste. Procedure First wash all the pulses, barnyard and little millet properly and soak them overnight. You can either soak them separately or all together. Soak the fenugreek seeds as well. Then grind the pulses, barnyard and little millet into a smooth batter. Grind fenugreek seeds along with pulses. Keep it covered overnight in a warm place for fermenting. Once the batter rises, add other ingredients and mix well. Grease an iron pan with oil or ghee. Pour the batter on the pan in circular shape and make uttapam. Allow to cook on medium flame on both sides. Once done, serve hot. This recipe is rich in protein, good fats, vitamin A, calcium and magnesium. It is also rich in nutrients like iron, zinc, folate and phosphorus. Let us begin with our last recipe, Bottle God Steamed Dumplings. In order to prepare this recipe, you will need 3 4 cup grated bottle gourd, 2 tablespoons sprouted sorghum, 2 tablespoons sprouted pearl millet and 1 tablespoon roasted Bengal gram flour. You will also need 1 tablespoon chopped coriander leaves, 1 tablespoon roasted peanuts powder and 1 teaspoon of roasted sesame seeds. Other ingredients required are 1 4 teaspoon turmeric powder, 1 4 teaspoon coriander powder, 1 4 teaspoon chilli powder, 1 4 teaspoon drumstick leaves powder, 1 4 teaspoon curry leaves powder, 1 tablespoon of oil or ghee and salt to taste. Sprout sorghum and pearl millet as per the process mentioned previously. Please note that different ingredients take different time to sprout. For this recipe, sorghum and pearl millet sprouted at the same time. Upon sprouting, roast them on medium flame. Allow them to cool. Later, grind them into a coarse powder. Except oil and sesame seeds, mix all the ingredients together. Add 1 to 2 teaspoons of water if needed to make a dough. Now spread oil on your palms. Divide the dough to form two long dumplings. Next add water in a pressure cooker. Place a small stand inside the cooker to keep a plate on it. Place these dumplings on the plate in the pressure cooker. Cook them for 15 to 20 minutes without a whistle on the lid. Allow it to cool and let it rest for 10 minutes. Then cut them in circular shape. 
Now add little oil on the pan. Place the dumplings on the pan and shallow fry on both the sides. Make sure they are crispy and golden brown in color. Remove and garnish with roasted sesame seeds and serve. This recipe is rich in protein, fats, calcium, iron, zinc and folate. It is a rich source of vitamins like vitamin A and vitamin C. This brings us to the end of this tutorial. Welcome to the spoken tutorial on non-vegetarian recipes for pregnant women. In this tutorial we will learn about the importance of non-vegetarian foods and various non-vegetarian recipes for pregnant women. Let us first learn the importance of various non-vegetarian foods. Non-vegetarian foods like chicken, meat, fish, prawns, organ meat are rich in protein, zinc, choline, iron and calcium. These nutrients are essential for the growth and development of the fetus. They aid in brain development of the baby and help in maintaining the health of the mother. To get these nutrients, non-vegetarian foods should be consumed during pregnancy. Now we will look at a few non-vegetarian recipes. Let us begin with our first recipe which is Kerala style egg curry. For this recipe we will require 2 whole boiled eggs, 1 medium sized chopped onion, 1 chopped tomato, 2 cloves of garlic, half inch piece of ginger, half sprig of curry leaves, 1 4 teaspoon of each, garam masala powder, pepper powder, Kashmiri red chilli powder, turmeric powder, 1 tablespoon chopped coriander leaves, 1 tablespoon oil and salt to taste. First we will see how to prepare boiled eggs. Fill a bowl with cool water up to 1 inch. Place eggs in it and cover with a lid. Allow the water to boil over high heat. Then cook for 6 to 7 minutes over medium heat for perfect hard boiled eggs. Now remove the hard shell of the eggs and keep it aside. Next heat oil in a kadai. Add ginger, garlic, onions and curry leaves. Turn the flame to medium and saute until onions turn golden brown. After this, add all the dry masalas and saute till you get the aroma of condiments. Then, add chopped tomato and salt. Now, add 1 cup of water and bring mixture to boil. Simmer for a few minutes until tomatoes begin to boil. After this, add the boiled eggs into it. Cover the kadai and simmer the eggs for 10 to 15 minutes. Turn off the flame and add chopped coriander leaves. Stir the gravy gently so that the eggs do not crumble. Serve it in a serving bowl. Moving forward, let us learn about the second recipe, chicken chetinad. For this, we will require 100 grams of chicken breast, 1 tablespoon oil, 1 large onion finely chopped, 1 medium tomato, 1 to 2 sprigs curry leaves and 1 bay leaf. For marination, we will need 1 4 teaspoon turmeric powder, 1 4 teaspoon chilli powder, 1 tablespoon ginger garlic paste and salt to taste. For gravy we will need half tablespoon coriander seeds, half teaspoon fennel seeds, 1 teaspoon peppercorn, 1 teaspoon red chilli powder, 2 cardamoms, 2 cloves, half inch cinnamon stick and 2 tablespoon shredded coconut. To begin with, Marinate the chicken by mixing chicken, turmeric, chilli powder, ginger garlic paste and salt in a bowl. Keep it at room temperature for 30 to 45 minutes. On a low flame, dry roast coriander seeds. After 2 to 3 minutes, add the remaining spices. Roast until you get the fine aroma of spices and keep it aside. Then, roast the coconut for a few minutes. Allow the roasted spices and coconut to cool. Using a stone grinder or mixer grinder, blend them into a fine paste by adding 1 tablespoon water. Keep this paste aside. Add tomatoes to the blender to form a puree. Now in a kadhai, heat oil, add onions and saute till it turns golden color. Add chicken and saute again for 4 to 5 minutes on medium flame. Add tomato puree, turmeric, 
black salt and chili powder. Mix well and cook till the oil separates. After this, add the ground paste and curry leaves. Saute this mixture for 2 to 3 minutes. Pour 1 fourth cup water and cook with the lid closed till chicken turns tender and soft. Allow it to simmer until the gravy turns thick. Garnish with curry leaves and serve. Please remember, this recipe can be prepared by using any one of the following. Mutton, organ meat, prawns and fish. Now, let us look at the third recipe, chicken liver sukkah. The ingredients required for this recipe are 100 grams chicken liver, 1 finely chopped onion, 1 chopped tomato, 6 cloves of garlic, 1 fourth inch of ginger, 2 tablespoon finely chopped coriander leaves, 1 tablespoon oil, salt to taste and 1 tablespoon lemon juice. To begin with, in a blender, add onion, tomato, garlic, ginger and coriander leaves. Grind this mixture into a fine paste. Apply this paste over the chicken liver and keep this at room temperature for 10 to 15 minutes. Now, heat oil in a kadhai and add the liver with marination paste to it. Mix it well. Add 1 fourth cup water and cook it on low flame for 10 minutes. After this, increase the flame and allow it to cook well. Once well cooked, turn off the flame. Add lemon juice on cooling and serve garnished with washed and chopped coriander leaves. You can also use mutton liver for this recipe. The next recipe is fish in spinach curry. For this we need 2 small pieces of mackerel fish, 1 cup of spinach leaves, 1 chopped onion, 1 chopped tomato, 1 teaspoon cumin seeds, 2-3 to three cloves of garlic, 1 4 teaspoon turmeric powder, 1 teaspoon red chilli powder, cumin powder, 1 4 teaspoon black pepper powder, half teaspoon coriander powder, 1 tablespoon white sesame seeds, 1 teaspoon oil and salt to taste. To start with, wash, clean and cut the mackerel into two parts and keep aside. In a kadhai, heat oil and add cumin seeds. Once it splutters, add raw spinach leaves and allow to cook for a minute. Now allow it to cool. Next, add cooked spinach, tomato and sesame seed in a grinder and make a puree. Heat oil in a kadhai and add chopped onions. Once the onions turn pink, add chopped garlic and saute until it turns brown. Add all dry spices and saute until you get the aroma of spices. Now add the spinach puree and cook for a few minutes. Next, add fish pieces and cook well. Now add 1 fourth cup water and salt. Allow to cook with the lid closed for 5 to 7 minutes. Remove the lid and let it cook on medium flame for 15 minutes. Once done, serve hot. Please remember, any locally available fish can be used for this recipe. Lastly, we will learn how to prepare meatball curry. For this recipe, we need 100 grams minced meat, 1 finely chopped onion, 1 chopped tomato, half tablespoon ginger paste, 1 tablespoon garlic paste, 1 tablespoon garam masala, 1 fourth cup fresh coriander leaves, and salt to taste. For gravy, 1 tablespoon oil, 1 finely chopped onion, 1 tablespoon garlic paste, half tablespoon ginger paste, half teaspoon cumin powder, 1 4 teaspoon turmeric powder, and half teaspoon of each chili powder, garam masala, and coriander powder, 1 large chopped tomato, and salt to taste. To begin with, wash and clean the minced meat well using a muslin cloth. Now, mix minced meat and chopped onions in a bowl. Add ginger garlic paste, garam masala, coriander leaves and salt. Divide this mixture in 6 equal parts and shape into balls. Heat oil in a kadhai and add the remaining chopped onions. Saute until it is light brown in color. Add ginger garlic paste and saute again for few minutes. Add all powdered spices, coriander seeds powder, cumin seeds powder, red chilli powder, garam masala and turmeric. Now fry this for 2 to 3 minutes. Add tomatoes and saute it for 2 to 3 minutes. Then add half cup water and salt to the masala. 
At this stage, slowly add the meatballs and allow to simmer. Stir gently after 5 minutes and cook until the meatballs are done. Serve hot in a serving bowl. Also, you can use minced chicken to prepare this recipe. It is important to remember that all these recipes are rich in protein, omega-3 fatty acids, vitamin A, vitamin B12, folic acid and iron, zinc, magnesium, sulfur and choline. This brings us to the end of this tutorial. Welcome to the spoken tutorial on Essential Nutrition Actions for Children. In this tutorial, we will learn about the best ways to prevent malnutrition. Essential Nutrition Actions are preventive approach to tackle malnutrition. They are required during the first thousand days. First thousand days start from conception to the second birthday of the baby. Essential nutrition actions are also known as ENA. For a newborn, the first ENA to be done is delaying the clamping of the cord. The umbilical cord should not be cut immediately after delivery. The nurse should first feel the pulsation of the cord. The cord should be cut when it stops pulsating. Delayed cord clamping allows blood flow between placenta and the baby. This may improve the iron store in the baby for first 6 months. Doing so prevents anemia in babies during these months. After clamping the cord, the baby should be breastfed. To do so, the baby should be placed on the mother's bare abdomen. A baby is born with an instinctive feeding behavior. With this behavior, it can find the mother's breast and initiate breastfeeding. This entire process is called breast crawl. More about breast crawl has been explained in an another tutorial. Please visit our website for this tutorial. It is important to start breastfeeding within one hour of birth. The first milk is called colostrum. It is the primary source of nutrients for a newborn. Colostrum has infection-fighting elements and good fat. Breast milk is also the first source of vitamin A for the baby. Vitamin A is vital for healthy eyes and immunity. Breast milk is enough to meet the vitamin A requirements for the first 6 months. After 6 months, vitamin A rich complementary food should be given. For effective breastfeeding, correct latching is most important. Poor attachment of the baby's mouth to the breast will result in nipple feeding. This will give very little milk to the baby. Baby's mouth should attach to the lower part of the areola. This way, the baby will get sufficient milk. Areola is the dark area around the nipple. Breastfeeding techniques are discussed in other tutorials. On completion of 6 months, the baby's nutrient requirement increases rapidly. At this stage, exclusive breastfeeding is not enough. Thus, complementary food should be introduced along with breastfeeding. It should start as soon as the baby completes 6 months of age. 6 months of age does not mean the start of the 6th month of a baby's life. It means she has completed 6 months and has started the 7th month of her life. Also, the quantity and consistency of the food should be changed as per the age. A baby's diet must include different food groups. The first food group is breastfeeding. 
grains, roots and tubers are the second group. Legumes, seeds and nuts are the third group. Fourth group is milk products. Meat, fish and chicken are the fifth group. Egg is the sixth group. Vitamin A rich fruits and vegetables are the seventh group. Lastly, eighth group is other fruits and vegetables. Ideally, a baby's diet must include all eight food groups. All these foods provide nutrients that help in the growth of the baby. The details of complementary feeding have been discussed in another tutorial. Let us now look at the supplements that should be given to the babies. From 6 months to 5 years, iron folic acid supplements should be given. It has to be given to the babies twice a week by healthcare workers. Vitamin A supplement should be given twice a year. This supplement is given from 9 months to 5 years of age. The supplements should be given under the guidance of a healthcare provider. We will now see ENA to treat a baby having diarrhea. Diarrhea is a major cause of malnutrition. It causes water loss and imbalance of sodium and potassium in the body. In severe cases, infant deaths may also happen. Hence, it is very important to treat diarrhea. ORS and zinc supplements help in treating diarrhea. ORS is oral rehydration salts. It replenishes the water and sodium and potassium in the body. It is easily available in the market as powder form in packets. To use it, mix 1 packet of ORS in 1 litre of boiled and cooled water. Along with ORS, zinc supplement is necessary too. Zinc reduces the duration, frequency and severity of diarrhea in children. It improves the immunity of the baby. It should be given once a day for 14 days. 10 mg of zinc per day should be given to the babies below 6 months. 20 mg of zinc per day should be given to 6 months old and above. In a small spoon, dissolve zinc tablets in breast milk or ORS. You may also use boiled and cooled water. ORS and zinc tablets should be given after consulting a healthcare provider. Along with ORS and zinc, less than 6 month old babies should be breastfed. 6 to 24 month old babies should be breastfed and given complementary food. Remember, a baby during sickness should be breastfed often. It helps in faster recovery and weight gain. It also comforts the sick baby. With breastfeeding, kangaroo mother care should be provided to every baby. Kangaroo mother care is also recommended for low birth weight babies. More about kangaroo mother care has been discussed in another tutorial. If the baby is older than 6 months, Increase the food to one and a half times. Do this when the baby's appetite comes back during the recovery period. Encourage the baby to eat by offering a variety of foods. Give her type 1 and type 2 nutrient-rich food as per her hunger cues. More about type 1 and type 2 nutrients has been discussed in Another tutorial. In severe conditions, the mother should consult a healthcare worker immediately. Healthcare workers should refer the severely malnourished babies to the NRC. NRC is a nutrition 
Rehabilitation Center. It is a unit for restoring the health of severely malnourished children. This center provides specialized nutrition therapy to babies. It makes them ready for home cooked food if they have completed 6 months of age. It also educates mothers about breastfeeding, child nutrition, and child care. Follow the essential nutrition actions to keep the baby healthy. They also help in preventing malnutrition in babies. This brings us to the end of this tutorial.